Hello guys. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can start using your Ethereum wallet to log into Express Server in a very simplified way. We'll be using MetaMask for this process. So let's start with the flow of login. The first step is for our client to send the wallet address to the Express Server using an HTTP request, of course. And we'll be requesting a nonce from the server. The server will generate a nonce and save it in a cache at their end as well and send the nonce to our client. At this point, the client will sign the nonce using the MetaMask browser extension and send back the signed nonce along with the wallet address to the server. Now, the server has the signed nonce, the wallet address, and the original nonce. We'll be using a library to retrieve a wallet address from the signed nonce and the nonce. So that retrieved wallet address will be used to confirm if the client is in fact the holder of the wallet address or not. All we will need to do is just to match this wallet address and the wallet address to retrieve from the nonce and the signed nonce. If both the values match, it means that the login was a success. Or if they don't match, it means that uh, it was a failure. So we'll be doing it practically now so that uh, I hope uh, any confusions will be cleared while doing it practically. All right, so let's start with the practical part of it, how to implement it on in code. So I have already uh, created the, uh, the, the, the files and started the Express application. We have a index.js, the entry point for the application, and then index.html file. As you can see, I've imported the Express uh, library created the application and it's listening on port 3000 and serving the HTML file on the main endpoint visible right here. So if you look at the HTML file, we have imported three scripts, uh, the jQuery, the MetaMask detect provider, and the Web3. And we have a, a button for login, a button to log out, and a button to display any status message. So let's start with the front end. I'm going to start with um, setting up jQuery. On document ready. And on info text. Okay, now let's add event listeners to the buttons. Just for the sake of a sanity check, I'm gonna see if these buttons are working or not. Log in and log out. Perfect. Now, if you remember the flow, the first thing over here is let's connect metamask with the front end two is get the wallet address from metamask if connect the front end with the metamask wallet and get the wallet address from metamask and once we get the wallet address we're going to send it send it to the server and in return we will get the nonce which we will sign so these are the steps that we're gonna do but do keep in mind that i'm not developing on a production environment so there may be bugs the code may be prone to errors um so because the main scope of this video is to make sure that you understand the process not to develop something to use in a production environment okay let's start with the first step which is to connect the metamask wallet before i do that let me show you that i already have it connected on the let me change the account to account two here we have it it's connected i'm going to disconnect it for for this video Okay, let's go ahead. But before we start connecting, let's show the user a message that 
connecting MetaMask. Okay. Now, we want to check if MetaMask is in fact installed on the browser as an extension. For that, we're going to use the function detect. Uh, detect Ethereum provider. Now, this function comes from the from this script right here, MetaMask detect provider. Okay. If no provider, meaning that it's not installed, then return did the function and let the user know MetaMask is not installed. Okay, but if it is installed, let's console log it for now. You get the object right here. It's already installed as you can see here. Now that we have uh, checked if MetaMask is available or not, let's go ahead and actually connect it to the front end. For that, we just need to await provider dot enable. Okay, let's test this out. Connecting with my mask. Next, connect it. It's already connected. So let's do an update. MetaMask connected. Okay, great. Now we have the MetaMask connected. It's time for us to fetch the wallet address from MetaMask. For that, we need to create a web tree instance. Providing it uh, with the provider. Now the web three class comes from this script right here. Okay. When we have the instance ready, let's use it to fetch the wallet address. But get Coinbase and let's console log it. Here we have it. As you can see, it matches the wallet address. Do keep in mind that the wallet addresses in the world of Ethereum are not case sensitive. So as you can see, a capital D over here, a lowercase d over here, doesn't matter because case sensitivity is not an issue in the world of Ethereum. Now we have to do the final step, which is so not the final, the third step, which is to send the wallet address to the server. For this, we need to create an endpoint on the server. So let's go ahead and do that. Get nonce address and let's get the wallet address from the query. Of course, you can go ahead do a post request and get it from the body depends on you but i'm just going to go with it get requests and get it from the query at this point we need to generate the nonce yeah let's generate the nonce string okay at least four digits have the nonce and let's send the nonce to the server to the client, sorry. Now we need to do another thing, which is to save the on on the server. Now you can save it in the database on cache, or you could just do what I'm doing, gonna do right now. But this is something that you should never do on a production environment. It's saved in a object, in a global object of sorts. Okay, save it. Now let's go and send the wallet address to the server. Cons response one. The first. This is the first request. So response one. One response one and await fetch. Providing the wallet address in the query. Let's get the nonce. 
complete response once, one response, one. Here we have it. Let's do console.log nonce. Here we have the nonce. Let's do it again. Another nonce. Perfect. Now we have the nonce and we have to sign it using the uh, MetaMask extension. Post side nonce with web3 but with the personal dot sign providing the nonce and the wallet address. Okay, let's see what we get from this function. Here we have the nonce, which is signed by the wallet. Now that we have the nonce, the final step is to send the nonce to the server. But again, we need to create another endpoint for this. So let's do that. Verify. Nonce wallet address signed nonce. Like a query. And let's get the nonce which is saved on our server. Perfect. We have the wallet address, we have the nonce and the sign nonce. At this point, we need to use this nonce and the sign nonce to retrieve a wallet address. For that, we are going to use two more libraries so let's go ahead and install them npm install equals peak sec util and ethereum js util just save okay they have been installed let's import them We'll be using two functions from them. Uh, the first one is uh, recover personal signature. It will come from the eat executable. The other one is buffer to hex, which will be coming from the require Ethereum GS utility. So let's do a try catch statement. So the first thing we need to do is to convert our nonce, this one, to a uh, to a hex. For that, let's go ahead and see hex nonce, hex nonce, hex nonce, buffer to hex and as you can see it's buffer to hex so we need to convert the nonce first to a buffer so buffer from nonce utf eight now we have converted the nonce into an hexadecimal let's now do the, use the other function to get the wallet address retrieve address is equal to recover personal signature First thing is the data, which is going to be the hex nonce. The other is going to be the signature, which is the signed nonce. Okay, let's go console.log retrieved address and the actual address. Now let's go and do um, if wallet address is equal to retrieved address. We will say that logged in. Else it's a failure. We were not able to log in. So let's just show an error. It will be caught over here in these. So we're gonna just send back an error. Or this is success false. No need to send a status. So we have logged in. How about we set a cookie over here? Key. And wallet address 
virus send success true perfect let's go back and const response to await fetch verify The other thing is defined nonce. Okay, at this point, we have the signed nonce. We are sending it to the server on this endpoint and validating if we actually are using, you know, are the holder of the wallet address or not. So let's go and do that. Sign the nonce and it says false. So that's weird. Why does it say false? Let me see. Perhaps there, an er there is an error. Okay, there is an error. Oh, sorry, it's UFP, it's UPF. Okay, now it's a success. True. We have successfully logged in. And as you can see here, the retrieved address and the wallet address are both same, confirming that the signed nonce was in fact signed using the private key which is uh, connected to the public key or the wallet address provided to us so at this point we have successfully logged in to our backend the backend confirms that the wallet address is actually owned by by the user logging into the system so this there is just a little bit more work that that i'm going to do and i'm going to do it uh with a setting the speed high so you don't have to wait for it Okay, so I have taken care of a few things. Now we are saving it in the cookie right over here, the wallet address. And I click on logout. See, it's not found. That's weird. Let me see. Of course, here. Perfect. Let me log out. Here we have logged out. You are currently not logged in. I refresh it and it's persistent. You are currently not logged in with MetaMask. Let's log in with MetaMask. Okay, you are logged in with your wallet. Refresh works. We are logged out. We are gonna log in. So that's it. This is how you can easily implement login with MetaMask. It's not that complicated. In fact, I'll be sharing this entire uh, entire code in a GitHub repository. You can find it in the description. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Uh, if this video helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel and liking the videos. Uh, I will try uploading new Web3 content uh, on a weekly basis or at least a fortnightly basis. Um, so I would really appreciate if uh, you could, you know, subscribe and help me grow my channel. With that, uh, thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.